So the question is, how do I make this back so it threads onto this case? In a previous episode about a year or so ago, I was working on the watch project and in that version we had the back screwed on to the, the, the body with uh, six screws. But uh, Thomas decided to switch that to a screw-on back, which meant that I needed to have threads on it, the back of the case itself. Now, I did some experiments in a couple of previous episodes to figure out what the right threads would be and, and the geometry, etc. And then when I made it actually with a real back and a case, it did not go well. So what I'm going to do in this episode is take you through the process, show you what didn't go well, and then show you the solution that I came up with. This episode, while it's relatively short, actually took a long time to make just because of going back and forth, figuring things out, trying things out, etc. So let's head to the workbench and I'll show you what the issue is. In the previous version, the back was screwed on with six screws, but for this version, we decided to change it to a threaded back. So the design is quite different. And this is the first version that I made. The first version fit just fine onto the back of the body. It was a little bit tricky to get on there when I had milled just this one side. But then when I came back and I milled the other side, it wouldn't go in anymore. In anymore. And you can see it, it just doesn't want to go in. Uh, it's really finicky. You can see it hasn't started at all. Before, when it was working, it was finicky, but it did go in. So let's see what's going on, and then I'll walk you through how I fixed this. We'll start at the base of the thread, and you can see where it ends. There's a little arrow right there, and that's where the thread mill finished threading. And then if we turn it around uh, all the way so that we can look at the start of the thread, you can see that it's rolled over. And that's because it became too thin. You know, there it is right there, the rolled over section. And so that's really the problem there. It's just causing problems with it engaging. At least that was the first problem. The second problem had to do with the order of operations, which I kept the same as I had before with the back that had the screws on it. What I mean by that is I started with this section here, not the face that you see. And this is the section that contains the threads. So that meant that I cut the threads. And then I flipped it over, as you can see here, and then put it on this inside diameter clamp again. And my theory is, I'm not exact, completely sure, but my theory is that when I use this clamp, this section here was now a fairly thin walled. And if I select this, you can see that it doesn't really go up that high. So I, my theory is that this was being pushed out a little bit, made slightly larger in diameter, and therefore it didn't fit anymore. So what I did instead, and this is what you'll see works much better, is I started out milling this side first, which does not have the threads. Now, since I'm milling this side first, by the way, it meant I could also use the probe to come in here and probe on the, the surfaces that were previously bored, and then go ahead and do those milling operations. And then when I was done, I could flip it over to the final operations, including the threading. Now, there's a little bit more that was involved, and I need to set up the CAD, and then I'll come back and show you those details. I spent a lot of time thinking about this and realized what I really needed to do is to model the threads, which you can't do directly with threading tools and fusion. So instead I used this uh, coil and you can see I set the coil up so that it would cut it like threads. Now this is approximate. It's not going to be exactly the same. In one place is here. This comes to an abrupt end, whereas with the thread mill, it'll actually have the round profile in this direction of the thread mill. The other thing that I did is I put a chamfer on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the other part and then add the cross section so that we can get a closer look at this. So first of all, this is where we have the gland. This is where the o-ring is going to go. Let me get this uh, oriented a little bit better. So this is where the, the o-ring is going to go right there. And it is touching where we have the threads a little bit, which is not ideal, but it seems to work fine, so I'm going to stay with this. And then up here, this part, this section right here, is the chamfer that I put onto it. So 
I ended up putting a chamfer both on both parts, basically here at the bottom of the gland, as well as here on top of the threaded back. And you can see the end result is I don't have a lot of thread engagement. I think I have about one turn of the back. So I wasn't sure if this was going to work or not, but I figured yet yeah, this is, with all of the constraints that I have on the geometry, this is the best I can do. So let me give it a try and see if it works. And so the idea is that with the chamfers, we won't have the partial thread that we had before that uh, was really weak and got rolled over. This will be quite strong and reproducible. It'll make it also, between these two chamfers, make it much easier to get the thread started. Here are the new versions, the body and the back, that both have the chamfer on them. And you can see this drops in uh, quite easily and then it doesn't take much of it at all to screw it in place. Now if we take a look to see how much it takes to screw in. So here's a mark right there and I'll move this down to the bottom. And then I'll move it over here. And you can see it's actually less than one turn of engagement. And this of course is much easier to do when I'm not also filming it, but it works uh, just fine. I've now put a O-ring on here. This is a point seven millimeter diameter o-ring, the cross section that is. And so now the question is, does it still fit in? And this is my first time trying, so uh, we'll find out. And so the answer is yes, it does. Um, I think I need a tool to be able to, to tighten it effectively. But as you can see, I can tighten it and it looks good. Let me focus that a little bit better so you can see it. So you can see that there's a little bit of a gap uh, and if we had the right tightening tool, I'm sure we could make that uh, even less of a gap, but the answer is yes, it'll work with the O-ring. And as you can see, it, it'll hold in place nicely. I'm having to use my fingernails to get it undone. So there we go. Success. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. Even though it's not a full rotation of engagement, it seems to work really well. It's easy to screw in. Even with the O-ring it works. I think it's pretty clear we're going to need a special tool. And actually there are some tools that are like rubber balls that probably would work as well. I don't have one of those to be able to screw the back on and off. But I am ready to declare this done. And so the next thing is to look at the openings for the crystals to get the crystals and the gaskets to be just right. And all of this is to be able to pass the 100 meter test, which, you know, as I mentioned in a previous episode, is not really 100 meters. Also, thanks again to my patrons for helping to support this channel. Their names are shown on the screen right now. Please help me grow the channel by subscribing, giving me a thumbs up, commenting below, you know, let me know if you have experiences with uh, watch design and you have any suggestions for how I should change things that would be especially helpful to me because I'm just figuring this out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.